Hello and welcome to another Zuzin session. How about that? How about that? And that fly! What the fuck? Anyway, so uh, the fly is still flying around. I still didn't catch it. I still didn't kill it. Maybe this is something that I'll have to do at some point. So today uh, we're going to continue doing what we did yesterday. Uh, we were doing a meta programming in C. And specifically what we were doing, we were generating a linear algebra library, right? So, and the reason why we were using uh, linear algebra, that why we were using a generation, code generation for linear algebra uh, is because of this, right? So we have a bunch of different size vectors and we have a bunch of, um, um, you know, vectors with different types. And so we have a combinatorial complexity uh, to generate different operations for all of those things. So, and I was thinking about different approaches on how to do that in pure C. And the most reasonable so far looks like just go ahead and generate all of that. Uh, so uh, then the user of this library doesn't have to wonder. Oh, they're using a function v2fsum. But when they try to grab the library for this v to, uh, v to f sum, there is no uh, there is no definition for this function in there because we're using macros and the actual definition of the function is obscured, right? So I could use macros and go nuts with a code generation using preprocessor, but first of all, preprocessor is very limited, and we're already doing more than um, a C preprocessor is capable in in this particular particular generation. And second of all, it obscures the names, it obscures the definitions, which makes the uh, experience of the user the library worse right because if the user uh, uses a library library and they see a particular function from the library that function should be present in the library so the user can just go there and see how that function works specifically um, so I've been in these kind of situations multiple times when I used a code that has a lot of macros and stuff like that and it's completely uh, impossible to find where all of these things are defined it's completely possible to explore this library and this is something that i don't want to have in this specific library so that's why i'm just like pre-generating everything and i'm shipping this pre-generated code as the final thing that you're supposed to use right so that's basically what it is you can find the source code of this library and the generator in uh, the chat right and uh, i'm gonna put this kind of thing in the disc what the fuck is going on uh in the description as well so here is the source code uh there we go this is for lovely people on youtube if you're watching this on youtube you can find this link in the description and if you want to watch that on youtube as well if you're watching on twitch uh go subscribe to to this channel right so uh let's go uvu so uh we already generate a couple of things right and uh we actually need to generate more i created a bunch of to-dos and um basically the objective of today's stream is going to be just close the majority of these to-dos right and close the majority of them um all right so we, we actually have a lot of interesting things for example we have um a notion of a type definition right a notion of a type definition and time definition consists of the name of the type and the suffix of the type you know what that means so if we take a look at the generated code you would see that the vector has uh, its size in its name and also it has the type uh, that this vector is using. So if the vector is using floating point, it has F at the end of its name. If it's using double, it has D at the end of its name and so on and so forth. So the type suffix is this specific thing, right? So within the code generation, we have a notion of a type definition, right? And we have a list of all of the types for which we wanna generate vectors, right? And then what we're doing, we're just iterating uh, through all of the type definitions and we're calling corresponding functions, for example, uh, generate vector definition, which accepts the size of the vector and type definition of the vector. And all of these descriptions are used to properly generate everything. You see, we sort of have like a global description of the vectors that we want to generate. Furthermore, we have also descriptions of the operations uh, that you want to generate, right? An operation has a suffix and the uh, the operator that you, you're supposed to use in C. 
and we have like a sum uh, subtraction multiplication division and here are the operators that we're going to be using and uh, you can find this kind of result in the source code you, you have subtraction and here is the operator that we use for subtraction you see so we basically have like a bunch of definitions and we combinatorially basically generate like different versions of these things so that's basically what we're doing that's basically what we're doing does it make sense um, hopefully that makes sense and at any point, I can quite easily add a new type. Uh, so far, I have float, double, and int. Uh, for instance, it's quite easy for me to uh, add um, uint64. I don't know, maybe even size, because size is, is more common uh, than like uint64. Size is sort of like a maximum uh, unsigned integer. That's what it is. It's a maximum unsigned integer. And if I add this kind of thing to, to the library and I can try to compile, it will not compile because now I need to add the definition for the size in here. So uh, I'll have to do something like uh, type def size and the definition is going to go like this. So uh, the name of the type is obviously size t and the suffix, uh, what's going to be the suffix for the size? I think it could be s, right? It's usually s. Right, so and let's try to generate uh, more things. And the problem here is that, uh, as you can see, it already generated uh, some things, but um, it doesn't know anything about size t because it's located in the uh, std lib, right? It's located in std lib, and the thing we're gonna do here, we uh, wanna include the std lib in here, uh, like this, All right? And if I regenerate everything and forgot, uh, forgot semicolon, there we go. Uh, we just generated a new version of the vector uh, that has size t as its type, and as you can see, it generated the corresponding definitions. So it, here is the size of um, size t of the size 2, 3, and 4, then we have all of the operations for all of these things, and all of these operations were automatically implemented. So the only thing I need to do, I just need to add a new type, and all of the, you know, operations, definitions, they're already there, right? So it's quite convenient and quite easy to add new things in there. Um, right, so that's basically the code generation. That's basically the code generation. Pretty powerful. Uh, you won't be able to achieve this kind of stuff uh, with a C preprocessor already, so... Anyways, let's actually remove all of that. Uh, that was just basically a demonstration on how all of that works. And in my opinion, it works very, very lovely. So uh, let's take a look at the to-dos that we have in the generator. I think we, can, we have a pretty interesting to-do. Yeah, on the previous stream, we implemented something called a short string, right? It's a short string. It's a limited size string uh, of the size of 120, 128. So um, the reason why you may want to have such a short string is because if you want to use like unlimited size strings, right? If you want to actually return something like this, which is basically an unlimited size string, you have to start thinking who's managing the memory for that string, right? Because you're passing a huge string by a reference. So there's a lot of memory management involved in this kind of thing. And in C, memory management is mostly manual except the stack stack uh, management is actually automatic right and uh it's kind of difficult to uh to actually work with these kind of things and what's interesting is that we have a lot of small strings we generate a lot of small strings uh for instance to not um you know pollute the code with a lot of like parameters and formatting things we just pre-generate these types once Right, and then we basically paste them um, around. So the size of the string does not really exceed, you know, this line. I think we also render the signature into uh, into a string. So usually the size of the string doesn't uh, exceed 26 characters. So essentially what I did, I wrapped a small array of characters into a struct and now this small array of characters of characters acts like um, like a value. So when you return this short string, you actually return 128 characters by value, not by a reference. And when you pass some uh, like uh, you know short string somewhere, you pass it by value. So basically, you exchange short strings via the stack. Right. So in, essentially for very small short strings, you're using the automatic memory management of the stack. Right. So you're starting to have strings that are automatically managed by the C runtime. 
So uh, that's pretty cool and that's pretty useful. And uh, I don't think we're going to have like longer strings. And because of that, we can just uh, use this sort of behavior to make our lives uh, a little bit easier. So uh, and I implemented a function called short f, which allows you to construct short strings with uh, like a uh, printf uh, format. Uh, you can actually find examples in here. There, there we go. So basically, uh, this is how you construct, construct a short string and then use it uh, around. Uh, then use it around. Uh, so, and here's the problem. Here's the problem, boys and girls. Um, so, C, uh, specifically GCC, has a pretty cool feature where it can type check the arguments. Uh, it can uh, type check. Um, It can type check the uh, the arguments of printf, uh, and uh, look, you, you can put like something like this in here, and it will compile fine, right? Um, I think so. There's something wrong in here. Oh yeah, because it because it's actually generated. So let's actually print that to std error, so it does not get into the source code. There we go. Uh, but if you try to change this thing into a string, right, it will uh, issue a warning saying that you don't have a matching, um, you know, format parameters, right? You don't have a matching format parameters. So this is very useful because it catches a lot of errors. But unfortunately, we don't have anything like that for short f. We don't have anything like that for short f. So you see it basically compiled, but it didn't work, right? It compiled, but it didn't work. So, and uh, how can you make it? So basically this, uh, this check performed by GCC only for its standard functions like printf, sprintf, fprintf, and so on and so forth. But it's not performed for your custom printf functions, right? Which is kind of like, inconvenient right so i would like to have a similar checking for these things as well luckily uh, gia actually taught me uh, how to do that luckily gcc has a special attribute that tells um, the compiler to actually check printf check arguments for custom functions so you can enable that functionality for your custom functions as well that's actually pretty cool. So do you guys know that? So you can have a custom printf function and the GCC would be able to actually check these kind of things. So uh, GCC printf check uh, arguments, uh, arguments attribute. Uh, so uh, here is the thing, right? Here is the thing. So printf wrapper arguments checked. Uh, I think we need to find uh, this thing in here. Uh, I don't quite remember. I don't quite remember. Here it is. Okay, so this is actually pretty cool. Right, so you basically add this attribute. You add this attribute to your function definition like this. So, and uh, the first number means um, where is the format string? Right, so we have a format string at the first argument. And the second number tells what is the first argument you need to type check, right? So you need to type check uh, starting from the second one. So that's basically uh, what you can have in here. And uh, if I try to compile this entire thing now, as you can see, it issues a warning, right? Saying that you have an incompatible thing in here. Now I can put a D in here and everything's fine. You see, you can essentially enable uh, you can essentially enable uh, the um, printf checking of uh, Clang and GCC for your custom functions. But again, it works only for GCC and Clang, right? It only works for GCC and Clang. So to make it th this thing compilable on other compilers, what uh, people usually do, they wrap it in a special macro, right? So we can uh, create something like check printf um, fmt or something like that and it will accept the uh, the two numbers in here so a and b uh, let's actually do hash define and uh, let's take this thing in here and just actually apply it in here right so something like this this is going to be a and this is going to be b so and if um i don't quite know um, um how to check um so c check if gcc i don't remember how to do that detect gcc as opposed to uh -huh. so two, 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 two. i think it's a gnu okay i see so it's a gnu c and clang 
if defined a gnu c or defined clang right so gnu c or clang uh, we're gonna use that otherwise if your compiler does not support this kind of thing we're gonna just basically have a dummy macro that basically gets deleted right so uh something like this uh and yep i can do check printf fmt um so want to and uh let's actually do something like this and let me double check that uh it's still working so i'm gonna put s in here uh there we go so it is working so this particular to do is uh done perfect all right uh so thank you audacious Ferries for two months of Twitch Prime subscription. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I uh, really appreciate your support. Um, mm -hmm. Generated code becomes complicated when you have to reference existing structs. Um, array of structs. We don't really have array of structs. Then you have to include types, which usually include other stuff. It's hard to maintain. Well, the code that we generate includes everything that you may want to need. Like we're generating only a single file, uh, right? So, and it includes everything. So you don't have to include a lot of things because you already have everything. Um, so. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. So I didn't think it's a concern. Like you see, here are all the type definitions. Here are all the functions and everything. So you're not missing anything. So it's like everything you, you will ever need, right? So there's no maintainability concerns in my opinion. Like it's literally everything. <clears throat> okay. <sighs> not really sure what exactly you're talking about. Like include types. So here, here is the types. You don't need to include anything. Here they are. Um, easy. All right, so uh, the first to do is done, I suppose. The first to do is done. So let's do a committee committee and then maybe push a push. So check print uh, f uh, formatting formatting arguments for short f function. Right, so I'm going to push that right into the repo. Mm -mm. So, um, what's going to be the next thing? What's going to be the next thing? Mm. So, yeah, now we need to have constructors for the vectors, right? So, uh, when we have uh, a constructor, let's say a vector like this, vector f, for each such vector, uh, I need to generate a constructor uh, that has the following sort of signature, right? Float x float y uh, right and it constructs the vector right so and i need to generate that for different types of the vectors right so uh, this one is going to be double and this one has to be d uh, and also for different sizes right so if, if the size is two right uh, it has to actually have the third uh, thing in here but to make it easier to generate maybe we can actually uh, call them x1 uh, x2 right so x1 x2 so uh, you don't have to like have like a list of the characters and uh, stuff like that right so uh, that's going to be the next sort of to do that we need to implement for this code generation we need to implement the constructor generator so uh, here we have a uh, vector op declaration and vector op implementation so we'll have to have similar things let's generate vector uh, constructor constructor declaration right so we need to have a vector constructor declaration so and uh, we're going to be outputting that into the stream the size of the vector is going to be n the type definition is going to be this and i think that's everything that you need to have um right so you don't need to have anything else uh so and um we need to generate the following thing right so type 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 so it would be nice to have a function that gets the type def and returns you the short string uh right mm -hmm. uh, and returns you a short string of that type that will be actually kind of convenient so uh short string right short string uh 
uh, type, uh, maybe render, hmm. type def name, right, it accepts the type definition, right, here's the type definition, and um, also I think it needs to accept size t, because it's kind of like a really important part of the uh, of the type name, I think. And I think we're going to return in here is going to be short f, um, and it's going to be v, the size, and the suffix, right? So it's n uh, and the suffix, uh, type def suffix, there we go. Uh, not sure if it's smaller or not, but I guess it's fine. Um, Mm -mm -mm. So type def name. Type def name. Mm, let's call it vector type name. Right. Vector uh, type. We can even call it vector type. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there we go. It's a vector type. Uh, you will have to provide the size of the vector and the type definition of the item of that vector, and it will return you this thing. Right, so then we can have something like type, uh, a vector type, we can provide n, uh, type definition, and uh, we have to do a similar thing, um, right, so we need to generate this thing, uh, then we have to do it one more time. So it would be nice to have to, like something like vector prefix as well, which is the same, except it uses the small letter. Right, so that's the difference. Uh, if you take a look at this thing, so this is the name of the type, it has the capital letter V, and this is the name of the prefix, right? It's kind of like the type, but it has a small letter. So we distinguish types and prefixes by the capitalization of the letters. So uh, maybe because of that, I want to have like a vector type and vector prefix. So the reason why I put a vector in here is that, is that in the future, we're going to have, uh, you know, matrices, right? We're going to have matrices. All right, so this is the type, and then we're also going to have something like a prefix, and this is going to be a vector prefix, uh, n type def. There we go. So we pre render all of that, then we're going to have something like this, and there we go. <clears throat> there we go, there we go. Uh, oh boy, this one is rather, rather interesting. All right, so if it's just a declaration, it has to be like this. So we have to put the type data, uh, prefix data, and then I'll have to generate uh, the arguments in here, right? I'll have to generate the arguments. So we'll have to organize the loop, right? So it's going to be size t uh, i starting from 0 to n, uh, right? And what we need to do in here is just fprintf stream s, um, so this is going to be the type, and then the name is going to be x zu. So the type is in the type definition, so here is the name, and uh, zu is i. So, but another interesting thing is that we need to separate them by uh, commas, right? And uh, there is less amount of commas than the actual arguments. So if you have like three arguments, right, you have three arguments, but you have two commas. So you have to take that into account when you're generating things, right? So. Here's how we're going to do that. We're going to put commas before. So fprintf uh, is going to be stream, uh, then comma space in here. But we're not going to print it if i is equal to zero. So it has to be greater than zero. There we go. So that's how we're going to remove that last comma in there. And then we're going to do fprintf stream, and we're going to close the, uh, the last thing and put a semicolon in here. So this is how we're going to be generating the vector constructor declaration makes sense uh, the vector constructor uh, constructed declaration um, all right so let's see what we can have in here so this is a vector constructor declaration and uh, there we go uh, so here's what we're generating so it's a vector definition then operation declaration right and then let's actually go and iterate through all of the types and all of the uh, all of the sizes Right, all the types and all the sizes, and uh, generate uh, constructor declarations. Right, so there's going to be constructor declarations, and uh, what do we have? Uh, constructor declarations. So it's going to be std out. Uh, it's going to be n, and this is going to be type defs, type defs type. 
There we go. And let's try to uh, generate all of that. And the implicit declaration, that's out because it's, uh, it's it has to be decal. There we go. All right, so it didn't generate anything properly. And let's see why. This is because if I got uh, a, new, a new line somewhere, but maybe not. Uh, so let's uh, go. Uh, yeah, yeah, I forgot to put a new line in here. Uh, let's go to the compilation and uh, let's take a look at this thing. So I'm going to do auto revert mode. And these are the constructors that we generated. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? So, uh, yep, that's actually pretty cool. So constructors for different sizes of different vectors. So these are only declarations, right? These are not uh, implementations. We're going to generate implementations a little bit later. Mm. It would be kind of cool to also maybe extract the generation of this thing into a separate function because we're going to be reusing the signatures for the constructors as well. Uh, so, but yeah, for, for now we can actually, um, for now we can actually uh, do the following thing. Uh, we can do the following thing. Uh, two, 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 two. So after each size, we can print like um, a new line. Yeah, we, we can actually put like a new uh, new thing in here. Uh, there we go. Okay, so now it is separated. <clears throat> so, uh, let me continue. <clears throat> let me continue. <clears throat> Uh, vector constructor declaration. So the thing that I wanted to extract in here, I wanted to kind of extract, I don't know how to say, um, yeah, we need something like signature, if you know what I'm talking about. Generate vector constructor uh, signature, right? So, and this thing is gonna uh, accept things like this, right? Uh, and I'm gonna copy paste it in here. Right, and the only difference is that it's not going to put any semicolons and any new lines in here, and the declaration is the is the thing that's going to put all of that there. Right, so we're going to put this thing in here, and it's going to be again vector constructor signature. It's going to be stream uh, n uh, type definition. There we go. Uh, stream n type definition like this. And the reason why I want to have that is because it will make it easier to generate implementations, right? It will make it easier to generate implementations. Let's take a look at this kind of stuff. Uh, all right, so this is what we have in here. Nice. Okay, looks good to me. Looks very, very good to me. Uh, so uh, let's go ahead and implement uh, implementations, right? So uh, generate vector constructor uh, implementation. It's going to be file stream size tn type uh, def type def. There we go. And the first thing we're going to be doing, we're going to be generating constructor signature, right? So here's a constructor signature, but then we have to add a new line and start uh, the, uh, the, the curly braces, right? So uh, how are we going to be implementing the constructor, right? Um, oh man, we have to, we'll have to generate the type name yet again. Oh shit. I guess I don't have that much choice anyway, so I guess whatever. Uh, but it is what it is. Uh, but it is what it is. So, uh, short string, and what is it going to be called? It's going to be called the type, right? So, yeah, essentially it is the type. So, vector type, uh, we provide n and we provide the type definition. There we go. Uh, vector and type definition. Uh, by the way, I forgot this thing. So this is going to be a stream. Right. F print F stream one two three four. So this is the thing, and we're going to call this a result. Uh, I'm not even going to use like this kind of thing because I noticed that it doesn't really work properly in on all of the possible compilers. So I had compilers that didn't like this, even though it was a C compiler. So maybe we're going to do. Yeah, we don't even need to zero initialize this kind of thing because we're going to be uh setting everything appropriately yeah yeah so we don't need to initialize anything that's totally fine uh okay so this is going to be the result and then this is going to be the stream one two three four 
So I'll also probably have to provide the type name in here. Let's actually type data. Uh, type data and uh, so here this is where I have to start the loop right so this is going to be size t uh, less than n uh, there we go and uh, now uh, we're going to do a result c uh, equal to x z u so it's going to be i and i and then uh, we're going to return essentially the final result one two three four return result return result and let's see does it compile yes it does compile but we don't use this function yet we're about to use this function and generate the constructors for this entire thing so we're going to be generating the constructors in the implementation section right somewhere here and what i'm going to be doing we're going to just uh, substituting a declaration with implementation Right, there we go. And if I take a look at uh, all the H and go down somewhere here are all of the constructors. Would you look at that? Would you look at all of these beautiful, beautiful constructors? So everything looks fine to me uh, so far. Uh, I didn't see anything, anything bad in here. Uh, though it kind of looks sus, not gonna lie. Is that the right amount? I, I think it is the right amount. So um, yeah. So lag.c and I think I want to separate uh, by new line for each individual constructor in here, right? So it's going to be something like this. Uh, all right. So, yep, there we go. We generated all the constructors. So would you look at that? What do you guys think? Isn't it cool? Isn't it cool? I think it's pretty cool. Uh, so we have all of the constructors for all of the types, for all of the sizes. And now you should be able to uh use these constructors like so right so if you want to construct a vector i vector 69 for 20 um this is how we do that so that's pretty cool so maybe we should also have some sort of like a test that uses the uh, la library and just does some computations and whatnot to be fair i don't know what kind of interesting computations we can do uh to test this library so uh yeah we'll have to think about that uh, but before we do that i think i'm gonna mark uh, this to do as done so i'm gonna delete training white spaces just in case and uh there we go regular constructors are done so the next thing is going to be a scalar constructors and scalar constructors are rather interesting actually Scalar constructors are interesting. Unlike the regular constructors, as you can see in, in here, unlike the regular constructors, scalar constructors will accept one single argument, right? So uh, this kind of thing is going to accept like one single argument. So, and essentially what it will do, right? So it's, it's S. It will redirect into like a regular constructor and just duplicate this argument several times. So this is going to be a very important operation and we also need to uh, properly generate everything uh, in there, right? We also need to properly generate everything in there. Mm -hmm. So what, is it, what do you guys think? Um, is that a cool? Is that a cool thing? Mm -hmm. So let's do a committee committee, I suppose. Let's do a committee committee. And then maybe even a pushy pushy. Uh, yeah, so the idea is to basically today go through all of these to do's and finish as many of them as possible. Sibani, hello. Welcome, welcome to the stream. Uh, useful. Uh, all right, so generate uh, regular vector constructors, constructors, and we're going to push that right into the repo. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Push that right into the, the repo. So I guess before I continue, so how long I'm streaming? Already I'm streaming for 42 minutes. I want to um, go to the kitchen and make another cup of tea. Uh, so let's go ahead and do that. Uh, so yeah, let's make a small break. And all right, so let's go ahead and generate all of those juicy, juicy scalar constructors. How about that? How about that? So, um, so there is another interesting thing. I introduced this, uh, you know, generators like vec type and vec prefix and so on and so forth. 
but I don't really use them throughout the code base. Maybe that's what uh, I have to do. All right, so maybe I just have to put this thing somewhere up there. L look at that. Like, I don't use them in here, so I think I should actually use them. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think I should actually use them. Uh, so here is the shirt. Here is some other stuff. And I think I'm going to place this stuff somewhere here. So it's a vector type, vector prefix, and um, yep, yep, yep. Uh, uh huh, uh huh. A vector type and type definition, and I can remove this thing. And this is the uh, this is going to be op prefix. Uh, so vector uh, prefix uh, and uh, type def. Mm, type def. There we go. So is it going to be op prefix? I'm not even sure. So I think I'm going to just go prefix. So this is going to be sort of like a common. Uh, common theme uh, throughout the library. Uh, code reusage, by the way. Code reusage within a, a tool that copy paste code. I think that's pretty cool. <laughs> uh, all right. So, and I guess I guess that's it. I didn't have that much of the code copy paste. I, I suppose there was not that much of that shit. Uh, all right. So uh, let's go and uh, okay. So that was uh, regenerated properly. Uh, so let's make a commit. Um, reuse vector type and vector uh, prefix in uh, in more places, right? So just basically reuse that thing in more places. Uh, all right, all right, all right, all right, and uh, there we go. There we go. <sighs> So um, let's do a similar thing. Uh, we have a, a generate vector signature. Um, to be fair, I would also like to change this function from the vector op signature that returns a short string to be something like this, where you generate a vector op signature by providing like the place where you generate it, because that puts a lot of stress on our uh, short strings. And if we're gonna use this sort of pattern very often, we're gonna exceed the sizes of the short strings uh, very quickly. So because of that, I don't think we have to use this kind of approach for the signatures, right? Uh, so I'm gonna just change it to something like generate vector op sig, and it's gonna accept the string into which you have to generate all of that and uh, instead we're going to be generating this thing in there right so this is going to be a stream and there you go so we're going to have that instead of the short emacs why don't you there we go that's what i wanted i wanted to just delete this thing all right let's go to the compilation errors because that's what it generated now so uh, i'm going to take this entire thing and change it, to change it to generate vector op signature. So this is going to be string. And then uh, we're going to be doing the following thing. There we go. So anything else? Semicolon and another one. Mm -hmm. So this is what we're going to have in here. Uh, generate vector op signature here. Uh, and then uh, we're going to just put a new line uh, at the end of this stuff. Uh, no need for, for anything else and I guess that's basically it let's take a look at the library itself uh, and the library itself looks fine on top of that we constantly recompile the library as far as I know yeah, yeah we, we do recompile it all the time um, so if uh, the code generator um, introduces some sort of compilation error we'll catch catch this compilation error pretty much instantly uh, Gia what's up how are you doing welcome to the stream uh, recursive chat uh, hello as well hello hello how are you guys doing? Uh, how are you guys uh, doing? So we're just generating some C code, nothing particularly special. Um, so... Mm, okay. Uh, refactor uh, vector op signature to generate vector op signature. Mm. Font files give me a pepper paints. Oh, well, I can, I can imagine that. They're pretty... They're pretty meh. I remember, yeah, Casey Moratori like actually made a pretty cool stream long time ago about fonts, but he didn't make the stream about fonts uh, per se. Um, I mean, uh, about specifically the font files. He just gave a talk about uh, fonts in general, like a theory behind fonts, and I find uh, I found that video actually pretty interesting. 
Right, so I think we can even find it. Uh, I'm not sure if it's going to be interesting for you because you're working with a specific format and I presume you're trying to parse a specific format. So it's not really something that you would be interested in, but uh, maybe for people out there who's interested in like fonts in general, how fonts are represented in computers and how they're handled by computers, this could be a really, really interesting. So hand uh, made hero fonts. Um, uh, introduction to fonts. This one is actually really, really cool. It was uh, like six years ago. And for anyone who's interested, I really recommend it. Uh, right. It doesn't talk about any specific formats like TTF or anything like that. It just talks about fonts in general. Right. Uh, things like, uh, you know, baseline, kerning and stuff like that. So he explains like all of these concepts uh, really, really well. Uh, so I'm going to give this uh, link to the description as well for lovely people on YouTube. Hmm. That was a long time ago, actually. He's doing Handmade Hero since 2014. Yeah. Since 2014. It's like seven years ago. Yeah. So the project started seven years ago. I think it was paused a couple of times because I remember recently he had a, like a really huge like pause on the project and he resumed it recently or something. So and keep in mind that he works on this project like a couple of times per week for two, one to two hours. So it's like uh, two to four hours per week, seven years. So if you accumulate how much time he spent, uh, I remember he said he actually spent like a year of, of full time job on this game, which is not enough for making a, a, like a game engine from scratch. Uh, so it's, it's basically his like a side project, right? So that's why it takes so long, um, right? I remember actually following uh, Handmade Hero episode till to 2000. Nice. I actually recently started to watch them for like from complete scratch. Uh, so I'm on episode eight, I think. So something about sound. It's a ten weeks of full time. Not even not even a year. It's even less. Holy shit. Yeah. Uh, okay. So uh, Handmade Hero day 162. Uh, and this is gonna be something like this. <sighs> All right, so it's a pretty good video. Uh, so generally on fonts and uh, if, 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 if freaking this. Um, by the way, Gia, do you parse the fonts manually or do you use like a library for that, like free type or STB um, true, true type something? I don't know. Remember, you you parse it yourself. Okay, sounds good. It's not that hard, I think. Yeah, I can imagine that. Uh, so it's not as hard as parsing. I don't know, like. A, audio or video formats where you on top of that have to also do some like you know processing and encoding decoding and shit like that so yeah it's just like basically mapping binary into a structure and extracting things uh from that binary and that's pretty much it so shouldn't be that hard um oh you don't even have to oh you don't even have to render anything that's even better Right, so, oh, that, yeah, that's even fucking better. It's because the, the fonts also store the information about, like, a, like a vector graphics of the glyphs and stuff like that uh, that you probably need to render, but you don't need to render that, so it's, it's even easier. That's actually cool. Uh, all right, that's cool. So, yeah, it, it simplifies everything, so you don't really need to, to use any libraries. Cheating. And furthermore, if you uh, use STB like a true type or something, uh, you're actually very vulnerable because this library is not safe at all. Uh, no security guarantees do not use this on untrusted font files. So basically, there's a shit ton of buffer overflows in this library. So if you're trying to make like a client application, you better don't fucking use this thing. So. And the reason why it is like that, I think, is because it's designed to be used in the um, pro, uh, game development asset pipelines, I think. Right, so essentially what game developers do, I heard, I'm not a game developer, but I heard that they basically take all of the assets and they convert them into their uh, appropriate format, into like bundle or something, so the game then can just easily pull out the, uh, the assets and so on and so forth. So they have shit ton of tools that sort of uh, aggregate the assets and process them and so on and so forth. And this thing is sort of designed to be used in these kind of cases where uh, you have fonts that you trust, right? You don't really usually 
ship this code to the user, but you use it in your tool set to generate things that you then ship to the user. So that's why there is no security guarantee in here because like they're not really needed, right? So it's not something that you're supposed to ship to the, uh, to the, uh, to the end user, right? So you can use it as the tool. If you want to some, ship something to the end user, I think it would make sense to use something like free type and whatnot. Uh, but yeah, anyway, so I'm going to actually give this uh, link to it in the description. Uh, STB, uh, STB library for fonts. All right, so for fonts. There we go. Uh, <clears throat> pull out my assets, senpai. Okay. I wonder if anyone created a library called literally senpai. <laughs> I need to know that. Has anyone actually... Yeah, somebody fucking created... Okay, somebody created this thing. Senpai. Uh, so the meta build system for Ninja. Meta build system. Hmm. And, and of course, the, the, the anime avatar. Of course. Of course. Uh, all right. So let's take a look at this thing. Uh, MIT. Uh, I really like how they sort it like by their length. <laughs> I don't know. It, it looks very satisfying. I'm not the one who actually cares about this kind of shit, but it like, <laughs> looks very satisfying for some reason. Uh, anyway, oh, yeah, it's just a Python code. Yeah, that's what you would expect. A Python code. Uh, cream pie. Aha, <laughs> very funny. <clears throat> uh, so, what do we have? Leg.c. Uh, so I think I uh, implemented everything. So we need to generate a scalar constructors, right? So we need to generate scalar constructors. Uh, let's go ahead and do the following thing again. Vector scalar cto sig. <laughs> what the fuck is this function? Uh, maybe I can even abbreviate it. No, again vec. Well, I cannot really abbreviate scalar. CLR, CTOR, <laughs> I'm not going to do that. Uh, all right. So what we're accepting here is uh, just size N and the type definition type. Yeah, so it's just a single letter for, for all of these components. Sure. Uh, short string type, vector type, and type definition. And we also need a prefix. Uh, uh, and uh, what we're going to be printing in here is we're going to be printing the type, then the name, but we're also going to add S at the end of the name to indicate that uh, it's a scalar, right? So it's a scalar. So, and uh, we're going to actually accept only one argument. So it's going to be that, and this is going to be just X. There we go. So here we're going to have uh, a type then a prefix, all of that has to be data, all of that has to be data, and uh, the type again, and I guess that's it. I guess that's the entire thing. Uh, all right, so we have a vector scalar signature. All right, so let's generate vector scalar uh, constructor uh, declaration, right? So this is going to be declaration. Oh, oh, oh. Type def, uh, type def, there we go. So, and in here we're gonna just call to the signature, right? So this is gonna be the signature, uh, stream and type definition. And at the end, we're gonna be printing um, the um, semicolon and just n, there we go. So this is the declaration. So uh, now we're ready to use all of these juicy, juicy declarations in uh, here. Let's go ahead and do that. Uh, so this is the CTOR. This is going to be scalar uh, constructor declaration. So there we go. Oh, oh boy. So uh, another thing. Um, let's take a look at how it looks like in the header file. Uh, here are all of these scalar constructors. Um, look at them. And I think I did a fucky wacky because they're not supposed to take their vectors. They're supposed to take their components, right? So this has to be flow, this has to be double, this has to be integer. So we already caught a bug, right? So let's go ahead and fix the bug. 
Uh, so I'm going to go to the definition of this function and I'm going to go to the definition of this one. And in here we have to actually use type definition uh, name, right? So this is what we'll have to use in here. And if we go to here, uh, there we go. So they're using their corresponding types now. So this is how they're supposed to look like. Makes sense. Makes sense. Sounds good. Sounds good. Tamaguchi. And the funny thing, if you add a new type, right, it will actually generate all of the new definitions, all of the operations, all of the constructors. It will do all of this combinatorial thing, right? As uh, as soon as you add a new type, there's like some sort of combinatorial explosion, right? And uh, and the generator actually handles all of that, so you don't have to do that yourself. Um, all right, so it's going to be lag dot c. Uh, and now we need to do implementation, right? So uh, this is constructor declaration. Let's go ahead and do implementation. Generate vector scalar uh, constructor implementation, right? So we're gonna accept this entire thing, then uh, this entire thing, then type dev, type dev. There we go. Oh, and you know what's funny? is that uh, we have several sections in here, right? Several sections. And all of these like several sections, they accept uh, functions that pretty much accept the same arguments. The output, standard output, the size of the vector, the type of the vector, uh, the stream, size, type, stream, size, type. We could actually like take all of these generators and put them into the array of functions and compress this entire code even further because what we're doing in here we're just iterating uh, through all of the sizes and through all of the types several times uh, we could do that separately right in separate sections uh, and uh, yep so there's a lot of things you can compress in here still so some of the functions granted accept additional things but it should be relatively easy to compress them uh, for instance i could compress them into like a single thing generate vector op piece declaration meaning that it will go through all of the operations and generate them so there's a lot of room to compress this entire thing even further so uh yeah the cool thing about this generator is that it uh, you end up writing code that is like highly compressible highly compressible uh anyway uh anyway anyway so what we need to do here we need to implement uh, generate implementation generate vector uh scalar signature right so this is going to be the signature uh stream and type definition right so then we're going to print the new line right we're printing the new line and this thing and then i'm going to enclose this entire stuff so what we're going to be doing in here is rather interesting because we want to refer back to a regular constructor Right, so we want to refer back to a regular constructor. So, all right, so this is going to be something like stream, then um, one, two, three, four. Um, and we need to return uh, generate vector constructor signature. Right, so this another constructor signature. Now we need a constructor name. Fuck. Um, that's very interesting. Do I want to actually split it to that granularity where I could take the vector constructor name based on these things? Um, maybe. Mm, I'm not even sure. So, because that will be something very, very useful. Uh, vector constructor signature. So here's a vector constructor signature. But what do I need to have in here is the vector... Con well, I mean, it's just a prefix. Okay, okay, so the vector constructor is just a prefix, so I don't need to, to have anything in here, so that's fine. So, and in here I can just do vector prefix uh, for n and type definition, and then I can take the data of this entire thing. There we go. Uh, then I need to open the parentheses, and now I need to generate the arguments. So I need to iterate uh, several times. Uh, so, and uh, let's do the following thing. Uh, it's going to be fprintf stream, and uh, then I know for a fact that the name of the argument is x, so that means I can just put x in here, right? And also, I need to 
do something like this. All right, so it's gonna be like that. And uh, we're gonna add that only if i is greater than zero, right? Otherwise, we, we're not gonna do that. So after we generated everything, I need to put uh, this thing, a new line, and there we go. We're good, we're Gucci, we are Tamaguchi. So, and something went horribly wrong. I don't know exactly what, uh, but we can take a look at the at this thing. Uh, so yeah, I have to accept this stream. All right. So if I take a look at LA, uh, where is the scalar constructor? Oh, I never actually called the generator for the scalar constructor, so I have to go in here. All right, okay. So this is a constructor implementations, and I might as well just copy paste this entire thing, and I'm gonna add the scalar uh, constructor implementations. There we go. So, and uh, let's take a look at that, and here they are. So here is the scalar constructors. So it just expands into these things, it just expands into these things, which makes, it actually, makes me actually wonder, um, Maybe you could do that via the vectors, maybe not. Because you end up... Um, yeah, I don't know. So, I guess it's a little bit convenient, more convenient like that. It could be, uh, could be macros, but uh, also modern compilers can probably inline all of that shit. But to, to inline all of that shit, we probably need to maybe mark it as static at least, right? So it will know that we don't want to import anything like that. So, but I mean, again, this thing is not finished yet. So we're just in the middle of generating things and then we'll see how it will go. Uh, all right, so we generated scalar constructors and everything compiling, everything's working and so on and so forth. So. So far, it's uh, almost half of a thousand of lines. That's how many things we generate. Though a lot of these functions, they're like one-liners that could be actually compressed like that. So maybe we can save a little bit of, you know, lines by doing this kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um. All right. How is the stream object implemented internally? I have no idea and I don't really care. Uh, I don't think it matters in this particular situation. Uh, all right, so let's uh, go. But you can always just look into the implementation of the C library and just look it for yourself if you're interested, if you're curious. You can satisfy your curiosity. There we go. Okay. So we generated the constructors generated the constructors um i really want to try to compress those things because you see um yeah there's a lot of repetition in here and i think we should be able to um compress this repetition i think it should be physical but before, before we do that i, I think i'm going to do a committee committee mm -hmm. Uh, generate, uh, generate scalar constructors. Mm -hmm. <sighs> Does anyone have any questions, maybe? Um, Let's see. So I think for this kind of thing. Um, mm, mm, mm. So okay. Uh, when you generate uh, instance, does C copy the whole array, not just the pointer to the first element? It copies the whole array. Yes, it does. Thought we could not uh, return arrays in C because they are removed from the stack once we leave the scope. But you can remove them if they are wrapped in the structure. Okay. Here is the thing. Um, so uh, the wrapping array into a structure is basically a workaround from uh, that behavior of C of, uh, you know, decaying uh, arrays to pointers. Right, I can, even, uh, I can even show you this kind of thing. So I already demonstrated this several times, but for you I'm going to demonstrate one more time. Right, so imagine that we have some sort of this program, right? Um, right? And you have an array somewhere on uh, in here. So array is uh, a size of five. 
So if you try to get the size of axis, right? So this is the size of axis, and the size of axis is going to be equal to uh, this size of axis is that. And let's try to compile the entire thing. It's going to be full, full C, and we're going to uh, try to run the entire thing. There we go. So the size of axis is 20. The reason why it's 20 is because the size of int, the size of int is 4. Right. Size of int is 4. And 4 multiplied by 5 is 20. So it basically return you the, uh, the amount of bytes that is occupied uh, by this array on the stack. So the interesting thing starts to happen when you try to pass this kind of array to uh, a function, right? So instead of doing it like this, let's actually literally just move this code to a different place, to a different place and call it like this, right? And uh, suddenly the size of the whole array became 8 and this, that's the size of the pointer on my machine because it's a 64-bit machine and 64 bits is 8 bytes. So as you can see, we have a classical situation of uh, array um, decaying into a pointer regardless of us saying explicitly I want th uh, the array of this size. It will never pass this array uh, via the stack by value unless you wrap it in a structure. <laughs> That's literally the workaround, right? You take this entire thing, uh, you wrap it into a structure, and then uh, instead of having that, I'm going to say that I'm going to have axes in here, and I'm going to accept uh, axes in here, right? So like this. And look, uh, I'm not going to have anything in here. I'm going to comment out the entire code, right? And if I try to run the entire thing, the size of this thing is still 20, right? It's the size of that array. And now if I pass it via the function, if I pass it via the function, it will still stay 20. So if you want to pass a fixed size array by value uh, to function or from the function via the stack, you just wrap it into a structure and it will do exactly what you think it will do. It will pass it by a value, literally. So, and if your structure is very big, right? So I, I think like how big is the stack? It's like a four kilobytes. Okay, so here's the single kilobyte, right? And uh, it will work. But if I actually make it, uh, let's say, um, Maybe megabyte. I think it's it's several megabytes. Okay, so I'm passing the megabyte. How about um, ten megabytes? Right. So how about ten megabytes? And there you go. You, you have a stack full of Right. So it literally passed uh, ten megabytes array by a value via the stack, and that blew up the stack. So it, it's just as a, as a confirmation that it did exactly what you think it did. Um, 8 max on Linux, okay. Um, I think through the compilation you can extend that. Mm. All right, so I hope this was a good enough explanation, right? Maybe we can compile it with Clang, uh, with um, app sanitize something, uh, Clang. Um, Clank sanitize memory flag. I don't remember this flag to be fair. Uh, to, 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 to F sanitize memory. So let's actually compile it with Clank with this specific thing in here. And let's just try to run it. And it should tell us uh, Stack Overflow. Uh, did it still? It didn't really say like a Stack Overflow. Maybe it was not really Stack Overflow. Maybe just the stack got corrupted. But it's a segmentation fault nonetheless. Segmentation fault nonetheless. Though. Um, I wonder if I can try to do it like that. So this thing was already allocated on the stack. So and if I try to push it like this, will it still... Yeah, it still suck faults because it was trying to push it like this. So anyway, uh, by the same principle, by the way, uh, works a thing called short string, right? So to not worry about management of very small short strings that we're passing around, uh, I just wrapped a small array of characters into a structure and now every time I need to generate or consume a very small string that doesn't require too much uh, memory management, I do that via the stack. 
This is super fucking convenient. If you have a situation when you're passing around very small strings um, around the code base, this is like a lifesaver, seriously. But I mean, it's, it's not gonna scale, but that's not the point, right? So if you know for sure that you have a lot of small strings that you pass around uh, and that you generate, this is so goddamn fucking useful. And um, I also created a function called short app that uses printf format to generate such short strings. So, and now you can do something like vector type, return short f with this format, and it doesn't require any memory management because it's a short string that returned via the stack. So, yeah, it's, it's very convenient, and I'm surprised that not that many people talk about it. And the reason why a lot of people hate C is that because nobody talks about it. You can improve the quality of your life while programming in C when you know your limitations. You can cut a lot of corners and inconveniences and see uh, if you know this kind of stuff, right? So, but a lot of people don't know that and they end up using like a very weird style of programming with a lot of malloc's, with a lot of freeze and trying to catch and don't forget to free things around and it's just like, why do you have to do that? The secret to uh, pleasant C programming is to avoid manage memory management. If you can avoid memory management at all, first you have a, a pretty big uh, performance uh, benefit, right? Because you don't manage any memory. And second of all, it's like using garbage collector. You don't manage any memory. So yeah. So it's all about finding the ways to not manage memory. If you find a way to not manage memory, you go super fast and it's almost like you're using garbage collector. Uh, so th that's beautiful. Um... Mm -mm. Yeah, string literals live in static memory, so they're not really malloced or anything like that. So they're sort of baked into the executable in some sense. Mm. Alright. We can even try to take a look at that. I wonder if if I have something like I don't know, uh, hello world. Alright, for instance. Print F hello world. Uh, random singing pepper paints. Uh, foo, foo, see, foo, boom. And if I do obg dump, does obg dump show me like uh, strings and shit? Uh, I don't see. Hello. It doesn't show me. Can obg dump show, uh, show data segments? Um, how can I examine contents of the data se section? Uh, row, row data. Okay, so what is minus S and J? Okay, so we can try to call this shit on that. Uh, eh, eh, mm, mm, mm. Mm. I actually want to do something like this. Oh yeah, there we go. So here's the whole world. So it's literally baked into the executable, so it doesn't really malloc anything. Uh, oh yeah, just to see minus C would be actually better. Thank you so much. I didn't think about minus C, minus S, I mean. Uh, okay, just to see. Mm, yep, dot S. Ah, this is, big. okay, I see. Yeah, there we go. So it's just literally created it, like baked into the executable. Here it is. Here's hello world. Yo, uh, Raj person. I hope I pronounce your name correctly. Thank you so much for tier one sub. Uh, oh, you gifted tier one sub. Uh, thank you. Thank you for gifting tier one sub. Really appreciate it. Uh, so yeah, mm, it doesn't really malloc anything. It's just baked into this thing. Uh, it's just loaded into the memory as it is. Mm, as far as I know, I'm not really, uh, you know, familiar with low-level stuff. My nose is itching like crazy today. Uh, in Russian folklore, there is a superstition that if you have an itchy nose, that means you're gonna get drunk soon. Uh, so, but I don't drink alcohol at all, so it's kind of weird, in my opinion. So... Anyways, uh, it's kind of it's kind of strange. That's kind of sus. Not gonna lie. Mm. In, in ours, it means it's gonna be angry. Okay, I see. M maybe it's something like that exists in all the cultures, and in different cultures, it just means different things, right? In Russian culture, it just means that uh, you're soon gonna get drunk. So, 
Mm-hmm. Interesting. But maybe they're kind of related to each other, right? So you, you get drunk and some people, when they're drunk, they get angry. So... Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, so what I wanted to do, uh, I already compiled like everything. I wanted to like extract this inner loop, uh, extract this inner loop into a separate function. Um, and I wonder how difficult or easy is it going to be. Uh, so I might as well go and call this function again vector ops decal. Uh, because it basically encompasses all of the ops. Uh -huh. Again, back to ops decal. So it's gonna accept the stream and uh, the size of the vector and the type of the element of the vector. It may also mean that somebody is talking shit about you. Oh, that's really interesting. So that explains a lot, actually. I mean, I'm a streamer. It's like, it's a, it's an expected thing to have people talking shit about you. It's like a part of the job, <laughs> right? Uh, so, when you become a streamer and you sign a contract with Twitch, there is a paragraph in there. You agree that people will talk shit about you daily. So, and I actually signed up. Yes, I, I do know that. I agree with that. So, <laughs> there you go. Now you're a streamer. Uh, so we iterate through all of these things. So this is decals, and uh, I can do something like this now. There we go. Uh, a boom, and this one is going to be std out, and uh -huh. so we compress this thing a little bit. Uh, we compressed those things, and in a similar vein, what I want to have, I want to have this thing, right? So the um, you know, gen vector ops impl, right? Gen vector ops impl. Uh, and here we're gonna accept the stream uh, n type def, uh, right? Type def, type def. There we go. And let me go and find this loop. Um, uh, to the Right, something like that. I'm not sure if I want to separate this kind of thing. Maybe this kind of stuff is not even needed to be separated. I don't know. Uh, so, yep, yep, yep. Looks good to me. Uh, and I'm going to stick this in here. Oh, I already... I mean, yeah. The, the compiler will tell me that I have a mistake in here, so I don't have to worry about this kind of stuff much. So I'm going to be removing all of the new lines just to make the repeat repetitive co repetitive code uh, a little bit more like make it visible, uh, right? So you can clearly now see that we have a lot of re repetitive code uh, for the functions that pretty much call to the same thing over and over again. So uh, this one is type type. There we go. Let's try to compile the entire thing. It's not going to compile. Um, so this is a type def. Right, this is a type def and uh, file stream is not used. Okay, so that's very, very convenient. Uh, okay, so this one is a size t, of course. This one is a type def. This one is a stream. There we go. And this one is types type. Uh -huh. So it's it's a type defs, right? Is it, is it a type defs? Yeah, it is a type defs. Uh, there we go. It is in fact type devs. Um, STD out. Uh, cool. So yeah, there we go. We have a lot of repeated uh, repetitive things, uh, right? And we all call functions with the same signatures, right? We all call the functions with the same signatures. Uh, and maybe we could put uh, all of these functions into our array uh, and then iterate through this entire array and just don't repeat this kind of stuff over and over again. If you know what I'm talking about. If you know what I'm talking about, um, we need to uh, create a type def for the functions, function signature like this. Mm, so let me see. So if I go 
to one of these functions. Right, what's gonna give the type of this thing? What's gonna be the type? <sighs> so, I suppose... Uh, how can we call it? Like a vector generator? Gen... Uh, maybe it's gonna be gen vector, yeah. So I think it makes sense to call it gen vector. Uh, okay, it seems to be compiling. And now, um, I can have a list of the things that I wanna generate. If you know what I'm talking about. So I need an array of this, of those things. Um, I could just go ahead and create an array. So decals, maybe we're gonna call them LA declarations, right? And uh, this is basically what we're gonna have. So the first one is gonna be a generate vector definition, right? So this is the first thing. Uh, then uh, operations definitions. Uh, right, so this is basically all the declarations. Operations declarations, constructor declarations, constructor declarations, and um, mm, 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 scalar constructor. Uh, uh, well, this is implementations already. Scalar, uh, scalar constructor declarations. Okay, cool. So there's like four of them. Um, and I'm thinking, do I want to have like a, how to say that, uh, enumeration for these kind of things, right? When I add a new type of declaration, I'm going to just, I don't know, maybe it doesn't make much sense. Uh, yeah. Hmm. I guess it's fine. The, the thing we want to have in here is just like iterate through this entire array. Hmm. Uh, okay, so you can actually use arrays in C language. Yes, you can. <laughs> Uh, C programming language has uh, variables, arrays, if conditions, um, loops, while loops, for loops, uh, pr procedures, functions, and stuff like that. It's, it's a programming language. <laughs> it also has a structures, enumerations, and unions. So it's a it, it's a programming language. Um, it is what it is. Uh, all right. So let, let's continue. <clears throat> uh, so to learn more about what program, uh, C programming language is capable of, I recommend reading C programming language book. So it actually explains it all. Uh, I really recommend this, uh, you know, this thing. So book. Uh, mm -mm -mm -mm. Amazon. Oh, shit. Can I have like a referral link to Amazon and get extra stuff when people buy from that link? So every time I refer to something to Amazon, I get some. Even though I don't use Amazon at all, like completely because I'm Russian, uh, like Amazon in Russia is not a thing. Um, so, uh, but in any case, yeah, so I recommend this book. Um, I don't know like how to make money from Amazon to be fair. So, and I'm gonna leave that in the description. Uh, C programming uh, language. Uh, language book. Uh, and what the fuck? This is not a stack overflow. There we go. So can I just do something like this? Uh, okay, that's a very interesting. Apparently, this thing at the end is very important. Otherwise, it cannot find this stuff. So yeah, I'm gonna improve then. Mm -hmm. All right, so here are the declarations. So I think I removed uh, the array len uh, macro, right? Uh, the array len macro. So let's actually include it yet again. Array len. So in here we're gonna have uh, accept the array size of axis divided by size of axis zero, and that's what we're gonna be using in here. Um, Mm -hmm. uh, why not write function calls in the same loop? Because the order matters, right? So I want to first call all of the def functions, so all of the definitions at the beginning. So then all of the ops declarations, so all of the ops below the definitions, and so on and so forth. If you actually combine them together, it will basically uh, interleave them between each other, which is not particularly great in my opinion. So I'd rather prefer to have sort of like sections. Here are the definitions, here are the operation declarations, here is the constructor declarations, here is the scalar constructor declarations. So I want to have these kind of chunks. Uh, 
we can actually try to test this kind of stuff. So look, look, look. I'm gonna regenerate the the thing. So let me actually go uh, like remove this thing. All right. So let's take a look at the header now. So and in the header we have this sort of uh, you know sections. Here's the definitions. Here's the operations. We can even try to uh, split them a little bit with the new lines. So it's a little bit more clear what we have in here. Uh, something like this. So here is the new line. Here is another new line, and here is another new line. There we go. I think we're good. I think we're Gucci. We are in fact Tamaguchi. There we go. So here is one thing. Here is another thing. Here is the third thing. Here is the fourth thing. So they're sort of like these sections. If you compress all of that into a single loop, right? This is how it's going to look like. Uh, it will basically interleave them with each other because uh, as soon as I call this function, it just basically generates it in place, right? So that's why order matters. Uh, okay, so if I remove this entire thing, right? So I compress this entire stuff and let's take a look. Uh, so this one, uh, I think I should call it type, right? So there was a little bit of a discrepancy between how we iterate this entire thing. All right, there we go. So, and maybe it's not even that bad, actually. So, wait a second. All right. It doesn't, I, I thought it was gonna look like shit, but it actually looks pretty nice. So, they're sort of grouped by their, t okay, okay, you won, you won. All right, it looks better. Sure. Uh, mods, reward this person with, with points. Um, all right. Okay. And if we separate it, it actually looks nice. It doesn't look half as as bad. So, yep. Looks pretty nice. Uh, we'll see. But maybe it's not gonna really work that well because, well, since it's a declaration. Okay. Okay. Fine. Fine. Fine, all right. I, I'm convinced that this is actually quite good. Right, I'm convinced. Uh, so, uh, uh, let me see. So this is gonna be lag dot c. Uh, and we don't need this shit then. All right, so none of that shit is needed, none of that shit is needed, okay. Uh, so we managed to compress this entire thing. Now, uh, what about the rest of the stuff? So here is the uh, ops implementations, constructor implementations. So this is this goes away. Uh, this also goes away, and there we go. So I might as well also uh, print up a new line every time we do this thing. Okay, cool. So yeah, I really like this project. I really really like this project. <laughs> And the reason why I like this project is because, um, yeah, it allows you to write a lot of like a compressed code, if you know what I'm talking about, right? So you, you can just compress all of this stuff and it's just like very, very satisfying. Um, so I think I would like to, yeah, I kind of need to put like new lines between all of them, right? Between all of the implementations. Mm, so, ops declaration, construct declaration, scalar constructor declarations, and the rest of these things. Uh, okay. Sure, if it, eh, let's put it like this. Uh, LA.h. Yeah, hey there. Some of them are not separated for some freaking reason. Even though I said explicitly. Let me revert this buffer. Yeah, they're not separated. What the fuck? Um, mm, so, we generate that. New line, generate that, new line. It's really sus. Really sussy. Uh, very, very sus. Mm -hmm. Ah, whatever. So, <laughs> I think I'm gonna fix that a little bit later. Um, okay. Uh, so, what do we have in here? So, this is LA and, uh, and here we're gonna have something else. Uh, we're gonna have something else. Mm. Compress the uh, root uh, generation code. There we go. I'm gonna push that right into the repo. Mm. 
push that right into the repo. So uh, let me see. So now we need to implement the um, square root operation for vectors. That's what we need to implement. This one is rather interesting, All right? Um, so if you have a vector uh, which is v2f, right? So here's the, your v2f vector. So the sqrt operation is going to v2f sqrt, uh, and it will accept a v2f vector like this. And essentially, what it will do, it will iterate through the, all of the components, right? I think it actually is something like this, uh, less than two. And for each of the components, it is going to basically calculate square root for this entire thing, square root f, and reassign it back. So, and we need to generate it for all of the vectors of all of the sizes of all of the, not all of the, though, not all of them, um, for only for floating points. And what's interesting is that for float, for float, you have to use sqrt f, but if you're doing double, right you are in trouble well i mean uh you have to use just a security right the security by default is a double so you need to have this kind of distinction you cannot use a security for any type right you can only use it for floating point types and for different floating point types you even have to call to different functions that makes this kind of shit complicated I'm not gonna fucking lie uh, prepare for trouble and make it done. <sighs> Classic. Ah. Memories. Uh, so. What I was, what I was saying. Uh, yeah, we could probably implement something like um, a function, I suppose. Yeah, so uh, function um, definition. Uh, we have operation definitions, right? So operator definitions. And operator definition basically uh, uh, defines a suffix and the operator, C, C operator that you're supposed to use. And here are the operations. So the prefix is sum, but the operator that we use is plus equals. We can define similar definitions, similar definitions for the functions, like SQRT and some other functions, because we plan to use a lot of them. Right, so, but here comes another problem. SQT function accepts one argument, some of the functions accept two arguments, and some of them accept three arguments. So, uh, basically, the function definition should contain not only uh, what types you're allowed to use with this function, and what other function you use, like, so basically it defines a family of functions. What other functions in the same family you can use for different types, but also the arity of the function. So you have to have a structure that encodes all of that shit. So to 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 can you use to be fair? Any question about C sharp generics feels like trolling to me. Uh, all right, so let me let me see, uh, and I'm basically ignoring them at this point. Um, so it's going to be type dev struct. Uh, so it's called fun definition, right? So in in the fun definition, what we're going to have, we're going to have, I suppose, the uh, the suffix, right? So this is basically the suffix that we're using. In in this case, it's going to be security, security. Then uh, we have to have the types right so for what types you can use this function so what are supported types luckily uh luckily we have enumeration enumeration that defines the types all right so and yeah since we have different types you're supposed to use different functions for that uh right um So we can have something like const char fun, um, where we actually allocate it as an array, and uh, we use the type devs. So and essentially uh, null note null means uh, the uh, function is not supported for this type, right? 
essentially you're going to use the following thing you have a function definition right then you take the function uh, and then you use type definition float right and if this thing is defined as null that means you can't use that function for this specific type for this specific type it is not defined right if it's not equal to null uh, you basically grab the name of that function and there you go you just use it so that's how we're going to define this entire thing so we have a suffix and uh there you go so next thing uh we also need to define as already mentioned arity so let's actually encode arity like this right so uh, for SQRT, the arity is going to be 1, for power, the arity is 2, for lerp, the arity is 3, and so on and so forth, right? So this is how we're going to be doing all of that. So, and maybe it would also make sense to have enumeration for uh, function definitions, um, right? So fun def uh, type, right? So this is going to be fun uh, SQRT, then we can have fun uh, power, fun uh, lerp, and I guess that's the only things that are applicable in here. Um, so len doesn't really um, work in here, right? Because it basically compresses the vector into a single value. The same does security len. Min and max are not functions because they're involving like conditions and whatnot. And uh, yeah, so far I think we're going to be supporting like th these three functions, but in the future we'll be able to add things like sine and cosine, uh, if you know what I'm talking about, so sine and cosine, uh, so yeah, but for now we're going to support only these three, so uh, yep, yep, yep. So and then uh, we can have something like fun def, right, so this is going to be fun def, uh, yeah, yeah, I forgot to do the following thing. Uh, this is going to be zero count uh, fun uh, types. Right. Mm -mm, count uh, count fun fun types. There we go. So uh, and let's go fun security and how we're going to be defining all of that. So security has a suffix of uh, security. Pretty straightforward. Then we define the functions, uh, the function themselves. They are arrays. And in here, uh, for different types, we're going to define the following things. So it's going to be type def float. For the float, the function is going to be sqrtf. For the double, it's going to be sqrt. For the integers, uh, we don't have such functions, so it's not going to be defined uh, for the integers. All right, so the next thing uh, we're gonna have an arity, and arity for this one is just one. There we go. So we m wrote a definition for a single function, and we're gonna be generating the code from this specific definition. So this thing acts like a configuration. You see what I'm talking about? Does, does this make sense? Um, I think it's actually pretty cool. And it's rather flexible as well. So in the future, you can have functions that uh, actually work with integers, but don't work with floats why not maybe there will be a thing like that who knows um so yeah it is what it is it isn't what it isn't mm -mm. okay so uh yes 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 kawaii freaking this so this is gonna be a power right so fun pole uh the suffix is going to be uh pole uh fun uh there we go type def float uh i think it's like po f right and the one for the double is without the f so this is going to be like that and for the integers they are not going to be defined okay so but the arity for this one is two right so the arity is two so the thing about lerp by the way uh lerp is not particularly defined um at all like in the c library at least it exists in c plus plus as far as i know but not in c so we'll probably have to generate our own lerp uh, and make it a part of the linear algebra because i think lerp is quite an important function mm. so and yeah maybe for now we're not gonna have a lerp right so i'm gonna just remove lerp um, because it will require like a special way of, uh, you know, definition and whatnot. There we go. So we have a data structure that basically describes everything that we're interested in. We can also statically assert 
uh, that uh, this array has the amount of elements we expect it has. Uh, the amount of functions uh, have changed. Please update the array uh, below accordingly. So maybe we could also assert the amount of uh, type definitions because if you add more type definitions, you may want to add more um, things in here, right? So we might as well also do something like a static assert, count type depths, and we expect right now three. Uh, the amount of uh, type definitions, definitions uh, have changed. Please update the array below accordingly there we go so yeah it might be very important uh, if you add a new type so you should not forget to update this thing as well uh, all right so it's kind of interesting so we introduced like such a construction and it only covers like security and power um, but it will make it easier to it's super easy to actually add sign and cosine and some other things all right, so let's try to compile, and it compiles. Would you look at that? Would you look at that, chat? Isn't that amazing? I think it's goddamn amazing. Uh, does anyone have any questions, maybe? Uh, we have so many people in here. Did we, did we get raided or something? Uh, I didn't think so. We just have a lot of people for some reason. <laughs> All right, so, um, okay. Uh, what's the next thing we want to do? We want to have a function that generates like declarations uh, and implementations in a similar uh, fashion as in here. So I can do something like again vector uh, fun funs decal, right? So it will accept this kind of stuff. It's type def type, uh, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I understand the security, but Pow, I don't see the limitation. Okay, let's take a look. See Pow. Oh, there is a powerful L. Well, I mean, it's all for one gun. Uh, yep, that's the only functions we have in here. I don't know. So, if you try to convince the the standard committee to add more functions in here, maybe we can do that. Uh, maybe not. We can implement power for integers ourselves, uh, and we're probably going to do that, but it's kind of outside of the scope right now, right here. Mm, 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 mm. So those are com complex functions too. Anyways, I uh, hope I answered this question. So uh, yeah, we need to add these things in here and uh, we also need to add vector funds decal, right? So this is gonna be vector funds decal uh, and vector funds implementation. So we'll need to have these two functions for uh, declarations and implementations. Uh, to, 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 to. So uh, let's recompile the entire thing and those things are not implemented yet. So let's uh, go ahead and implement them. So this thing is going to accept stream, then the size of the vector and then the type definition, right? So here's the type definition. Uh, there we go. And the thing we want to do in here is probably first uh, generate the signature for the vector function for a single vector. Well, we, we have to iterate through all of the functions in here. Yeah, 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 that's what we need to do. So we have to do size ti, um, i less than count font types, right? And we're gonna call to gen vector. Uh, oh my god, I can see shit. Fun decal, uh, it should accept file stream size tn. Um, what am I doing? <laughs> I think I'm getting tired. Uh, type definition, and then uh, we take the font definitions, and there we go. So here is the font depth. Cool. So, and this is the function that is going to accept uh, the rest of this stuff. Right. So uh, this one is going to be the pointer, this one is going to be like that, size tn, type def, and uh, fun def. 
right on this one is going to be actually single one so this is going to be just declarations and maybe i'm going to say assert uh, zero not implemented not implicit not implemented please not implemented uh all right so let me recompile the entire thing so we have a lot of unused stuff in here so let's actually mark it as uh, not used right now but we're going to be using it in the future so this is the fun definition uh, and we need to declare this function as well need to declare this function as well uh, so this one is going to be that funds implementation uh, file stream size t uh, type definition uh -huh. and Paste this entire thing. So fun implementation. Oh boy. Uh, and this one is going to be something like this. Mm -hmm. So that's basically it. All right. So now it asserts. Okay, not implemented. So we just need to implement these two functions. Uh, all right. So uh, pretty, pretty cool. And before we go and implement all of that, I think I want to make a small break. Uh, I think I want to make a small break and uh, make a cup of tea because I ran out of tea. So yeah, let's go ahead and do that. All right, let's continue. So we just need to implement functions that will generate the function declarations and function definitions and whatnot. Right, so that's essentially what we need to have. Uh, so first of all, it's, if it's a function declaration, we probably have to uh, generate the function signature, right? Generate vector fun signature, right? So it's gonna be a stream and uh, the type definition of a vector and the function definition, there we go. So though it is rather interesting, um, maybe, for the function declaration, we have to check, right, we have to check if the particular type even supported by the function. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So remember how I said fun uh, devs i, so we have fun, and then we can take and put a type in there. And maybe to make it a little bit more explicit, I'm going to actually call this iterator a type, right? So this is the type iterator, maybe, uh, well... Oh shit, it's not a type iterator, it's a function definition iterator. All right, so here we get a type definition, but from the type definition, it is, it is absolutely unclear. It is absolutely unclear what's the type uh, of this type definition, right? What's kind of the type. So maybe one of the things that we have to actually accept in here is the type type. Right, so then um, we could check if the corresponding function, if the corresponding thing even supported in here. All right, that's actually pretty cool because the type def type is an index within the type definition array. So we're going like meta level higher. So we're rising the level of meta levels. So, and all these names are not particularly good so we probably need to go through all of these like names and just like change them somehow i think type definitions and type and stuff like that is kind of mad maybe that's what i have to do right now because the the, the names of these enumerations and stuff like that is pretty confusing have you ever written a device driver in c uh, adding support for gamepad to grub does it count so, I guess, I don't know. Um, all right, so one of the things I want to do maybe here is to actually rename some of these, like, things. I want to kind of rename some of these things. So this is a fonts declaration. So let's make it compilable. Uh, right, so not implemented. So this is not implemented and I'm going to do void stream. So I suppose I'll have to go through all of these types and rename them, right? Uh, I'm going to go and rename them because right now they're not particularly convenient. 
So this thing requires a constant refactoring. Uh, this stuff requires a constant refactoring, unfortunately. Uh, all right, so does this compile? It does not come. Well, I mean, it does compile, but it uh, basically fails at assertion. So I want to go through all of these types and rename them. All right, so I didn't think it makes sense to call it a type definition, right? So we can just call it a type. But again, type of what, right? Maybe it could be called something like item or a component type. Um, I don't know. Uh, maybe, maybe, maybe. Uh, maybe, maybe, maybe. So let me let me see. So I want to rename this thing into a type, uh, and let's go to all these compilation errors. Then we're gonna go and just do uh, type def type because that's what it is. Uh, uh huh. And a boom. Uh, yep, yep, yep. Oh my god, that's a lot of things in here. Like we're using this type def thingy like in so many different places. Holy shit. Uh, yep, yep, yep. Um, and let's go. So I want to also do the following thing where I'm going to remove the uh, these things so I can still generate uh, generate some stuff. I can still generate the functions. Uh, okay, so and let's go. So this didn't uh, affect the generated code. Okay, rename type def into just type right and uh, I'm gonna just push that right into the repo mm -hmm. so this is the type uh, then uh, we have type def type so what kind of type we have right so what kind of type uh, and I suppose maybe this is exactly what it should be called it should be called kind right type kind um, I... mm. This one is actually really painful. <laughs> maybe it is a type definition. All right, maybe it is a type definition and this should be called, yeah, so maybe this is the thing that should be called type, All right? And this is a type definition then. I guess it makes sense. All right, so it, because of that, uh, let me go ahead and revert the previous commit. <laughs> Luckily, we're using a version control system, so it should be easy to revert the uh, the previous commit that we made. There we go. We just reverted this commit, so it's fine. So it is a type definition. And the thing that I want you to rename here is actually rename this thing into a type. I think that makes sense. Um, so, and now, so this is going to be... Um, something like this uh, type definition and then count types yeah that, that, that makes more sense now that makes way more sense i love that all right so here's the type here's the type definition it defines the name and the suffix all of that is very very important so count uh, types so here we have types and now we have like type float type double and every time we're passing a type def a type definition around instead of passing type definition i think we should pass the actual type in here we should uh, work on the level of indices right let's not pass the um, you know the actual structures let's pass the indices i think that's way better because that way we can have an index when we can use that index to indicate that something is not supported by that type and we don't have to store the index of that type within the structure in here. Yes, that's a five head move. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, 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 go away, freaking this, mother flipper. Oh, <laughs> sorry. All right, so this is what we have in here. So, and as we iterate through this entire stuff, okay, so here is the type. Right, uh, so we count types, right, you see, we are just iterating types, nothing particularly special. And then here is the type definition. So now the naming makes way more sense. It makes way more sense. So this is the type and oh my God, oh my God, this is so good. Feels so good. Oh my God. Uh, okay, so we renamed essentially type dev type into just type. Okay, so uh, rename type dev type into just type. There we go. I'm going to push that right into the repo. 
I didn't realize you can actually put the type def keyword after the struct. Am I really? Uh, can you? No, you cannot. You have to put it before. Sorry. You just have to put it before. Anyways, anyways. So every time I pass a type definition, right? So here's the type definition. Can we just pass a type instead? That would be rather interesting. So essentially here is a vector type, uh, right? And I could just pass the type like this. And if I need to take the type definition, I can just do type definition over type. You see? Uh, yeah, we're just passing numbers around. Isn't that cool? I think it's pretty cool. So yeah. So, and there is a global definition of those things. Yeah, there's a global definition of those things. All right, that, that makes sense to me. Uh, because then I can use these numbers to store in some particular places to indicate that something is supported for the type, something is not supported the type. So, uh, yep, yep, yep. So this one is going to be also the type. So I provide the type and I do something like type in here. Uh, so here is another thing. This is the type, this is the type, and I can have a type definition. Right, so it's going to be type defs, and this is the type, and I can just do something like def. There we go. Um, yep, yep, yep. Mm -mm -mm -mm. So, and we pass this kind of shit around all the time, so that's the refactoring that I want to actually do. That's the refactoring. Is that a good refactoring? Maybe. Mm -hmm. Um... Mm, so this is going to be the type and um, mm -hmm. and then do we even need a type def oh shit oh fuck now this is mm. now we have a collision with other names fuck fuck mm. This is painful. Okay. So maybe we're not going to do that for now. Um, we're not going to do that for now. So I'm going to just restart that. Uh, all right. So let's go to back to lag. lag and uh, let's take a look at some other things. So we also have uh, operator types and operator definitions. Right. So let's actually introduce like uh, operator type. Mm. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Okay, so this is the operator type, and this one is gonna be something like op sum uh, count ops. Yeah, there we go. So that's the renaming that I wanna do. So these names are shorter, they're, uh, they're a little better, and so on and so forth. So this is operation sum, subtract, multiplication, division, and yeah. Uh, so let's go. Mm -hmm. So this is ops, ops, uh, yes, 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 uh, what do we have in here? So this one is going to be op type, uh -huh, uh -huh. so this is op, uh, ops, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh -huh. op, 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 ops, okay, that's cool. So this is another renaming, essentially. Right, so we renamed op dev type to just op type. Uh, op, uh, rename op dev type to just op type. There we go. So we're not doing anything particularly special, we're just renaming things. So operator short strings, this is fine, nothing particularly special. So where is the fun? There's no fun. So fun, wait a freaking second. What the fuck? Did I accidentally remove something? Where is the function definition shit? Did I completely... I, I feel like I completely removed it. Fuck. Uh, so when I reverted some shit in here... Okay, so I actually reverted more than I wanted to revert. Okay. 
<laughs> so I reverted a lot of shit. Um, that's fine. Okay, so I can uh, copy paste it from Diffin here. So that's totally fine. Uh, that is fine. Everything's fine, everyone. We didn't lose anything. We didn't actually lose everything. So everything's okay. Uh, all right. So I'm going to put this thing in here. So here is that. You can always just copy paste it from the, you know, from the history. That's why we're using version control system. So we never lose anything. So this is the font type. Uh, right. So this is the count fonts. Um, it's font definition. And let's try to recompile the entire thing. Okay. So um, count uh types yeah that one is interesting we count in types uh so this one is going to be fonts types and uh fonts and what else do we have so is it type float type double uh type float type double and there we go so we have all the definitions in here nice so let's do a committee committee to not lose anything in here um uh -huh. Introduce uh, function fun type and fun def function types and function definitions. Function types and functions definitions. Mm -hmm. So the thing I want you to do now, right? So when I'm generating the um, you know function implementation, right? Something like generate vector fun. Uh, let's say declaration. Okay, let's start with the declaration. What I want to provide in here, I want to provide the uh, output where I'm going to be generating all that, the size of the vector, the type of the vector, and a type is going to be the enumeration, right? So this is going to be the enumeration. And then I want to provide the function type, right? So it's going to be font type uh, rather than um, the actual the function definition, right? So, and then I can have things like a type definition, which I can grab from the existing type defs, right? So this is going to be type. Uh, and then I can have a function definition. So this is the, well, this is a fun def, this is uh, that one, uh, fun defs type. And here is an interesting thing. So now, since I know the index of the type, I can easily check from the function definition, right? Uh, that it has a function name. So I think I need to rename these things. Uh, fun name. Mm, name for type. Yes, perfect. It's a name for type. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Name for type. It, it actually explains this stuff really, really well. So you have a name for type, here's the type, and here's the name for that specific type. And here's the name for that specific type. Okay, that's actually perfect. Name for type. Uh, name for type. So, and now within this thing, I can take the function definition, I can take a name for type, and I can take this type. And if this thing is available, only then I'm going to generate something. If it's not available, right, so uh, I basically ignore this entire thing, right? So basically don't do anything because there is no uh, function definition for that specific type, right? Make sense? I think it makes sense. Uh, so it's essentially going to be ignored. Mm. It's pretty cool. I'm not going to lie. Um, so, and uh, then the next thing is going to be what? Um, we'll need to generate this entire thing. We need to generate this entire thing. Mm, uh, so, how are we going to be doing that? So, we need to have a short string uh, vector type, right? So. Oh, I, I need to have a name because we already have a function called vector type, which accepts the size and the type and generates a short string. But I, how do I call that? It's a it's a vector type. It's a function, like maybe make vector type. Maybe that's what it should be called, right? You see, it's kind of it's kind of weird, uh, right? So assert zero uh, to do uh, to do not implemented. Right? See so what I'm talking about? So uh, let's find vector type. Let's call it make vector type <laughs> because uh, I quite often want to use this as the name of the variable into which I'm saving things, right? So I'd rather prefer to, to make it like that. So maybe it's a make vector type and this is the 
uh, make vector prefix, uh, right? So make vector type, make vector prefix. So naming in this in this specific project is actually extremely extremely hard because there's a lot of like meta levels. Everything is on such a meta level, it's really hard to come up with the names for things. Uh, right. So and then I can say something like short string uh, vector type, and then I can make make vector type, and then I can make uh, a vector prefix, right? So it's going to be vector. Uh, prefix so I have that now uh, which is nice uh, vector name and vector prefix so then uh, we're gonna be generating what it's gonna be f printf stream so here we go uh, we put the type then we put a prefix then we put the name uh, the prefix of the function and then we put the arguments and the amount of arguments will depend on the arity so it's a completely separate sort of topic okay so here we have the vector type so uh, the this uh, second thing is going to be vector prefix uh, like this vector type and vector prefix and uh, the last thing has to be function definition name um, well I mean it has to be just the name of from the function definition it, it, it's a suffix okay thank you thank you so much so that's what it is it's a suffix there we go so this is how we're gonna generate the declaration for this thing and now depending on the arity of the function definition so it's gonna be something like arg starting from zero arg less than function definition arity right uh, plus plus arg we're gonna be generating all of the arguments if the argument is greater than zero uh, we have to separate it with a comma okay so what we put in here is the vector type right so we have to do something like this oh, it has to be stream uh, so this is the vector type and then we have to put the name in here so I, I'm gonna put it vector and then we're gonna, I'm gonna use the number of the arguments I think this is how we're gonna go so this is the vector type data and the argument is gonna be arg there we go so after that uh, I need to close uh, the parentheses put semicolon and put a new line and there you go cool that's it so this is how we generate a function declaration for a particular function function declaration for a particular function all right so let's take a look at how they're gonna look like <clears throat> so it does not compile properly so this is the type uh two, 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 two. oh you have to make vector type uh right now they accept a type definition so i'll have to put it like this which is fine i suppose which is totally fine right and in here we have to put a stream so it looks fine to me and the function is never used uh okay uh so this is where ada or pascal would be extremely useful because in ada or pascal you can say that array is indexed by a particular enumeration and if you try to put an enumeration of a different type that is not indexing that array you will get like a literal compilation error not even a warning but an actual compilation error but in c as you can see it's uh you have to like be aware of this kind of things but luckily the compiler just caught this bug by checking unused arguments and stuff like that so it's fine i guess it is kind of fine um chat tell me why are you dead <laughs> why are you so dead today uh is everything okay D does anyone have maybe any questions so far like everyone is just like completely silent it's just like uh, is everything okay is there anything you want to tell me is this uh, something you want to talk about okay so let's actually iterate through the function types. So it's gonna be fun, zero, fun, less count, uh, funs, plus plus fun. And then I can do generate vector fun declaration, right? In the, in the fun declaration, we have to pay attention to the stream HC. Uh, all right, so this is gonna be string. Uh huh, and this is one is going to be n. We already have n, so then we provide the type, and then we provide the fun, and there we go. So we're going to generate a bunch of declarations in here. Okay, let's take a look at what we have. So this one has to be std out. Um, I have an idea actually. Let's actually create file stream at the beginning of the main and assign it to std out. And every time I'm trying to refer to um, std out, 
I'm going to be actually referring to a stream and it will make it easier to copy paste pieces of code from here to a different places. I also noticed that I just have some print apps in here, which is kind of weird. So I think those print apps have to be f print apps into the stream. Uh, there we go. People are lurking. I see. Uh, okay. So if I take a look at the la.h, uh, what do we have? Oh, there we go. Look at that. So we have a security, we have a power, and as you can see, a security is uh, like has arity of one, and a power has arity of two. Look at that. Isn't that amazing? I think it's getting freaking amazing. So, yep. Uh, that's pretty cool. And there is no security and power for integers. Look at that. There is no one for integers because uh, it's not defined for the integers. So. Uh, but that's pretty pogue, if I say so myself, if you know what I'm talking about. It's straightforward, pretty straightforward. Uh, okay, so uh, let me go and maybe do some other stuff. Mm, to be fair, since I'm doing this stuff like that, and since we basically compressed everything into a single loop, maybe it would make sense for me to also inline this thing, because it doesn't really make any sense. Um, right, so it's going to go back to ops. Uh, yeah, I think it would make sense to actually inline all of that. But uh, before we do that, uh, I think I want to do a committee committee. All right, so this is a mac vector prefix. And what we introduced in here, we implemented gen vector fun decal. Right, so that's basically what we did. Uh, implement a gen vector fun decal. And I'm going to push that right into the repo. All right, so this is going to be lag.c, and uh, I really want to inline this function. I think it makes sense to have it like that. Uh, yep. So I think it will make it fine. Uh, ops decal. Right, and the same goes for ops implementation, right? So let's go to the ops implementation, and I can just put it in here. Uh, yep, there we go. Oops, implementation, and let's remove this entire stuff. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And we're ready to recompile. So it takes a type definition. Okay, so I have to type devs type. Uh, yep, is there anything else in, in even here? Type devs uh, type. There we go, cool. Mm -mm -mm -mm. So what we did in here, we basically inlined two of these functions. In line gen uh, vector uh, ops decal uh, and and gen vector ops implementation. There we go. So we inlined both of these functions, and I'm going to push that right into the repo. And by the way, you can find the source code of this entire thing here uh, in the chat or in the description if you're watching it on YouTube. So all of that is available there. You probably already know that if you're watching it on YouTube. Right, because uh, if you watched until this uh, point, you probably watched everything before that. But if you're watching on Twitch, you may be watching since like the middle of the stream. So maybe you didn't know that this code is completely open source. Now you know. Isn't that amazing? I think it's good and amazing. My God. Alrighty. So <laughs> I don't know what's up with me. Uh, okay, so everything seems to be, yeah, everything is separated properly, and there we go. That's pretty cool. It's pretty neat. Uh, now, if I go, what do we need to generate now? I think we need to generate, uh, oh yeah, since some of them are not available, it's it can be actually double spaces or something, but it's fine. It's totally fine. Uh, we need to implement gen vector fun implementation. That's what we need to do. Let's go ahead and do that. Gen vector fun implementation. So it is going to accept pretty much the same arguments like this. Uh, but now we need to probably. Well, this one is rather interesting. All right, so I need to extract all of that shit in here. Right, and to into a signature of some sort. Mm. Into a signature of some sort. So we need to have a uh, generate vector function signature. Right, and 
the thing is you should ignore everything if it's uh if the function name is not available but we already check it in here so the question is how what, what exactly are we doing here i'm not quite sure so maybe we're going to be accepting only the things that we have in here like a function definition suffix we could actually accept return prefix and suffix the arity and the type of types of the elements i think that's what we can have yeah so maybe this kind of thing could be even more generic because quite often when we generate signatures yeah we provide the return type uh prefix and suffix and the, then the, we have arity and the elements and stuff like that okay so maybe this thing is going to be more generic than i thought so uh okay so in this case we can do something like uh, prefix uh maybe let, let's go like this uh return uh, let's go to red then because return is already taken by c uh return uh prefix suffix uh prefix suffix i'm not sure if i want to actually separate anything in here so prefix and suffix um the next thing is uh item uh maybe uh argument argument type so this is a single argument type and uh also the arity right so this is the arity and that should be it right and essentially what we're going to be doing in here we're going to be calling to uh this thing right so this becomes the return type this is the prefix this is the suffix right this is the prefix this is the suffix then we organize the arity we organize the arity uh, arity loop i would even say uh, this is going to be i, this is arity. So, and of course, uh, I'm going to be doing something like that. All right, so this is the uh, this is the thing greater than that. So, this is the arg, and this is i, and I don't know, so maybe it could be, um, let's, let's put x in here, uh, and then we close this entire thing. So, this allows us to generate a signature right so this allows us to generate a signature and maybe we're going to be reusing that um uh, for all sorts of things in the future because it looks pretty generic to me which is nice okay so return type in here is basically the vector type right so it's going to be vector type data so the prefix is the vector prefix data so the suffix is the function suffix right so it's a fun def suffix uh, the argument is the type of the argument essentially maybe I should call it archetype yeah, yeah, yeah so I think it's has to be called archetype and to make it consistent this thing should be called return type so this is the return type this is the archetype and be, uh, because of that I can just call it arg maybe arg number arg num to make it shorter uh, so arg number then we have arity Oh boy, uh, arg number, if arg number is greater than zero, we separate it by that. So this is the arg type, and this is the arg number. And since we have this convention where we have arg type and so on and so forth, maybe we can have an arg prefix as well. Uh, so I don't know, arg prefix. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and we can put it like this, so it's gonna be like S. Uh, arg prefix so this function accepts a lot of arguments and this is fine i think i think there's nothing wrong with that so because it's a very you know specific function uh and we'll see how it goes uh it's basically a template it's basically a template so we have a return type uh yep 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 so vector type data prefix is vector prefix uh, data the suffix is the function definition suffix uh, the argument type the argument type is the same as the vector type so it's a vector uh, type um, data argument prefix in this case is going to be equal to i suppose v to indicate it's a vector and the arity is going to be function definition arity 
uh, function definition arity i said emacs there we go so then we can remove all of this except maybe this thing there we go uh, so that's how we're going to be generating all of this that's a lot of things uh, i wish there was a way to sort of like associate uh, all of these values with their corresponding names in here but i mean and see there is no named parameters unfortunately there is no named parameters it is what it is and it isn't what it isn't so let's try to compile this entire thing and it compiled first try surprisingly uh, that's kind of strange uh, somehow first try all right so in a similar uh, fashion, we're going to do the implementations. All right, so uh, let's do the following thing. So I'm going to kind of copy paste this entire thing. All right, I'm going to kind of copy paste it. Then we're going to have a signature, but now instead of that, oh boy, so this one's going to be fun because we need to organize the loop. That we need to organize the loop. Uh, let's go ahead and organize it. So this one is going to be a uh, new line. All right, this is going to be new line. This is opening brackets. This is closing bracket. Uh, but the question is. Hmm. Hmm. We're usually collecting everything into a single argument. Yeah. We're usually collecting everything into a single argument. And because of that, we're kind of assuming that the arity, uh, arity is always greater or equal than one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is something that we'll need to do in here. Okay, so, and uh, what we start to do in here, one, two, three, four, four int, i less than the amount of these things and plus plus i uh all right so this one is gonna be um so we could actually do something like a prefix lori master thank you so much for two years two uh, years two years thank you so much for two years of twitch prime subscription thank you thank you thank you and welcome to our epic code generation club how about that how about that mm. thank you so much all right, so uh, I need to actually define something like a uh, argument prefix. All right, so this is going to be the argument prefix, and I'm going to put it in here because I'm going to be reusing it quite often. So this is the argument prefix, uh, arg prefix. And in here, what I want to do, I'm going to have an argument, and I'm collecting everything into the zeros one. So that's basically what it is. And then I use i, and I make it equal to basically the function name like this so this is basically the function name and now i'll have to do another loop within that right let's actually go ahead and do all of these things so n is the size of the vector so this is the vector size uh, the next thing is the arg prefix there we go here's the arg prefix the next one is the function definition and name for a specific there we go so we're using function with a specific name for a specific type and that's pretty much it so and then we need to organize the loop uh, over the arguments so this is going to be arg number uh, arg number less than the function definition arity i started to feel like i'm implementing a programming language <laughs> I feel like I'm implementing a programming language that compiles to C. And you know, well, if it feels like I'm implementing a programming language that compiles to C, what's the source code of that language? Well, I think the source code of the language that compiling, uh, I'm compiling is this. So this is basically the AST of the programming language that I'm compiled down to C. That's what it feels like, actually. <laughs> Which brings us to the next logical step. So we have a lot of these configurations, like uh, like, like defined functions, defined uh, uh, types, defined operations that are hard coded within the language in the tables. They are compile time values. The next logical step would be making them runtime values and storing them in an external configuration. 
So yeah, you can even make like a small language that generates this library for you. You can have a meta language that generates this uh, uh, linear algebra uh, library in C for you. And uh, we can c come up with a, like a really uh, neat syntax for defining these kind of things. Um, that would be kind of interesting, I think. What do you guys think? Yeah, that's that's really interesting, actually. Hmm. Hmm. So and then you'll be able to add more and more of these things. Yeah, yeah. So it would be kind of kind of cool, I think. So every anything I try to develop turns into a programming language eventually. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so um, so we're doing that, and if arg num is greater than zero, it's going to be f printf uh, stream. It's going to be something like that. So there we go. Uh, f printf stream, and uh, then I need to call the corresponding things in there. So how am I going to be calling them? So it's going to be f printf stream. Uh, right. So we have the argument prefix, the argument index, argument number rather. Uh, argument number uh, C uh, and then maybe I that's right C and maybe I so in here I can put argument prefix we already know about it so then the argument number uh, and that should be it I think so after this entire thing I should do f printf stream and close this entire thing put a semicolon and just do it like that there we go Look at that. Look at that legitness. Uh, cool. Um, so we generated some shit. Naizu, naizu, naizu. Uh, if I try to compile the entire thing, so arity, it's a function definition arity. There we go. So now I need to call this thing several times, I suppose. I already calling it actually. So that means in a lay, we should be able to find v3d pow. Uh, and where is the implementation? There is no implementation. If I revert this entire thing, v3d pow, there's no implementation. It never generated it. Okay, so I think I forgot to call this function somehow. Um, oh yeah, I think I did. Okay, so what we need to do in here, we need to iterate through all of the fun types. Fun zero, fun less that count funs, uh, plus plus fun, and then I do generate vector uh, fun implementation so this is uh, what we're generating the size of the vector the type definition type definition type and the um well i don't think i think you can just provide the type and the fun and it will refer to this um to the structures itself and okay so we have implicit con oh okay so quite important thing i forgot i forgot to return the result right so that's what i forgot uh, after this entire thing, we just have to do f printf uh, stream one two three four return uh, this entire thing, and uh, the only thing I have to provide, I have to provide argument prefix. There we go. So if I try to compile, a fuck. Uh, okay, so it's already getting pretty, pretty in a pretty good shape. Not gonna lie. Uh, look, so it generated everything we wanted. The only thing it doesn't know, it, it doesn't know where to get those functions. So essentially, we just need to add the um, the header, the corresponding header. So let's quickly do that. Uh, this one is going to be at printf stream. Uh, and let's include math, right? So let's include straight up math. And I also wanted to put a new line in here so it looks good. Right, and all of that shit compiles. Look at that. So if I try to find v2f, for example, sqrt, there we go. So that's the implementation. Look at that. And uh, yeah, that's basically what it does. So if you do sqrt, it basically applies sqrt to each individual component of the vector and just returns you that vector. If you have a power, it basically treats the components of the first vector as the basis for the power and the components of the second vector as the exponents themselves. And then it just collects everything into that one and just returns that. Uh, all right, so, and that compiles and that works. So, and you can add more functions in there uh, specifically. All right, so it should be relatively easy to add, for example, sine and cosine. Let's actually see how easy it is to, to do that. Uh, right, so what we did in here, I think we just implemented vector fun seek, not really vector fun seek, we implemented vector fun impl, right, so that's the most important one. Uh, the other one is just auxiliary function. Uh, implement this thing, and I'm gonna push that right into the repo. Okay, the thing I wanna check, 
So, okay, we have a system that allows you to add more functions. How easy it is to add, uh, you know, sine and cosine, for instance. So let's, let's go ahead and do that, sine and cosine. I want to have a sine and cosine for all of the types that I have, for all of the types that support that, of course. So uh, let's try to compile this thing. And okay, so uh, the amount of functions have changed. So I need to define, uh, provide the definitions for the new functions. So here we're going to have the following thing. So the function is sine. So the suffix of that function is going to be obviously sine. So this is the suffix that is going to be used by the vector ones. Name for type. Okay. So I suppose we only support float and double, right? So we're not going to support that, that for integers. For the float, it's going to be sine f. Uh, for the uh, double, it's going to be just sine. And the arity of this function, I think it's one, right? So sine, yeah, it, it only accepts one. So, and the same thing we need to do for the cosine. And uh, in that case, it's super easy to just query replace sine with cosine. There we go, boom. And that should be it. And I forgot to update the amount of functions. Now we have four of them, right? And it compiles and let's take a look. Uh, do we have sines and cosine? There we go. So we have now uh, vector f sine and cosine. And here we have vector f sine cosine. If we take a look at their implementations here, they are, and they're using the corresponding functions. Uh, what is arity? Arity is basically a fancy term for the amount of arguments of the function. So this function has arity equal to. This function has arity equal one. Right. So to not say amount of arguments all the time, because it's three words, amount of arguments, you can use a single word called arity. So you can even Google that. So that's it, literally, there's nothing more to that. It's just like a single word to describe the number of arguments or operands taken by functions or operation in logic, mathematics, and computer science. That's it. So uh, that's what it is. It is what it is, and it isn't. Who would it isn't? Okay, cool. Okay, I guess it's kind of cool. Uh, alrighty, so we have like accumulated Oh yeah, sometimes you, you kind of skip the new lines and it's just kind of weird, but I guess it's fine. Maybe we should get rid of the new lines in here completely. It's going to be mashed together, but maybe that's kind of the point. <laughs> Uh, maybe you want to mash everything together if you take a look at this thing yeah as you can see now everything is matched mashed together but you can still sort of get the idea of what is going on here i think so that's a lot of shit not gonna lie all of that is a uh, uh, programmatically generated procedurally rather so all of that procedure generated so in for for a procedurally generated code agree that it's actually pretty readable yeah so if at any point while using this library you want to know okay so what this function does you can just easily go there and just see what it does so yeah it's pretty straightforward there's nothing particularly special in here so just uh yeah it's pretty cool and uh so what else do we're gonna have here so i think we're ready to remove these to do's right so we implemented the security and power and on top of that we implemented also um <clears throat> we also implemented sine and cosine if we had lerp uh if we had lerp we could actually define lerp as yet another function with arity three we could probably do that um yeah but unfortunately we don't have lerp so that means first we need to generate lerp right we need to generate lerp oh shit that's actually very interesting uh for example we actually have min and max for floats so there is a f min f and f max f and so on and so forth we could probably use this kind of shit there um but it would be also nice to have f min f and f max f for integers too so uh i'm not sure we'll see we'll see okay so uh what do we have in here um mm -hmm. implement uh like add sign and cosine functions all right so i can probably quickly add um min and max for uh floats and doubles i can probably do that let's give it a try so uh, this is going to be min and this is going to be max. Uh, let's see how it goes. So we've got that. Uh, so let's go. Mm. 
is going to be fun min. Um, right, the suffix is going to be uh, to, to, to min uh, name for type. So right now we're going to only support floats, right? So that means it's going to be for float is going to be f min f uh, for a double is going to be f min if I understand correctly. The arity of this thing is two, right? So we have two, two arguments for this function, uh, right? And uh, similarly, we can have this thing for a maximum, right? So query replace min and max, there we go. So, and then uh, the amount of functions is now six. We support min and max. And let's take a look at the library itself. Do we have min? There we go, we have uh, vec to f min. And if I take a look at the implementation of this thing, yeah, it just uses f min f and just finds the minimum between them. So just pretty straightforward. Uh, two, 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 two. So, yep, that's pretty pog. Uh -huh. So, and that means we closed yet another to do, right? So close yet another to do, min and max. Right, so we only need to lerp. Um, so, and we probably need to generate a couple of lerps. Uh, right, we need to generate lerp for... Uh, for float and for double. Uh, and then we can generate uh, lerp for the vector things. So, yeah. Mm, length is also going to be very interesting. So, uh, we're only left with... Um, functions that require a special treatment. So they're kind of difficult to just stick into our system. They, they have to be generated in a very specific way. Um, okay, so let me let me see what we have in here. So first thing I want to do, I want to actually commit everything we have in here. So what's the size of the final library actually? It's not even thousand lines of code, right? It's not even thousand. Um, yeah, I guess it's fine. Okay. Uh, introduce min and max functions for floats. And let's push that right into the repo. So, uh, I guess... Um, I mean, yeah, I guess I implemented pretty much everything I wanted. Maybe I want to actually go until... Uh, this fun this thing is usable in wang tiles, right? So I think it will become usable in wang tiles uh, as soon as we implement these three. So it would be nice to just do that. I think. I think. I think. I think. Mm. So let's generate lerp. Uh, let's introduce a function uh, called gen lerp. So the thing is going to accept. It's going to accept the stream and the type name, right? So the the argument type essentially, right? So it's going to be just a template. Uh, and um, what we're going to have um, again, lerp declaration. I think we have to call it declaration first. So it's going to be fprintf uh, string, uh, and uh, we're going to have a return type then. Uh, to be fair, we also probably have a like a name of the function. So this is a return type. This is the name of the function. Then we have the uh, the rest of the stuff. So it's A and B, and then T. All right. So and then just put it like that. So and in here um, we provide the type, the name, and the type three times. All right. So that way we just generate um, you know lerp declaration and the only thing i want you to do in here is essentially just generate uh the lerp declaration for what lerp f for the float right so let's just have it for the float and just lerp for the double right so and let's see if we're gonna have that so if i go to here here are the lerps lerps here are the lerps uh, so these are declarations, but we also need to implement them, right? We also need to implement them. Let's go ahead and implement them. Uh, yep, yep, yep. So it's going to be like C. Um, and this one is going to be void again, lerp 
implementation it's going to accept this thing and then probably we want to extract uh, again lerp uh, signature right so it's going to be very very much similar all right so it's going to be just that but without new line and this thing so that way i can just say again lerp uh, signature uh, signature stream name type there we go and then we can just print semicolon and the rest of this stuff cool so uh and in the implementation uh the implementation is going to be actually super straightforward so we'll do that and then we close that and then we just one two three four return that a plus uh b minus a uh, we're kind of assuming that they're going to be called A, B, and T, but I guess that's fine. And there we go. So uh, then I'm going to take the declaration and put them into the implementation section. And hopefully they're going to be implemented. There we go. Uh, let's take a look at la.h. So where is lerp? There we go. So here is the implementation. So uh, we just have uh, lerp uh, functions for floats and doubles. And the next thing we want to do, we want to have a vector implementations for, uh, for those functions. Right. So now what we can do is just yet, uh, like add yet another one. So this is going to be lerp. Uh, and uh, let's define it. So it's going to be defined as anything else. Right? Uh, fun uh, lerp. Right. The, the prefix is going to be lerp for flows we're going to have lerp f and for the double it's going to be lerp but irity for this one is going to be three uh and uh yeah there we go i have to actually say that it's seven now we have seven of them and if i take a look at la.h uh yeah we have lerp for vectors for some of the vectors now and if i take a look at how it's implemented it's essentially just using lerp for all of the components in here there we go so we implemented lerp for these things and everything seems to be compiling as far as i can tell uh, as far as i can tell um, more programming with programmer studinko thank you so much ralph for 17 months of uh tier one subscription thank you thank you thank you uh, really really appreciate that so uh, yep 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 we're generating dirt now and yeah that's pretty pog, not gonna lie. Okay, so uh, we had a to-do for that, uh, to-do lerp operations for vectors, cool. So the next thing probably we want to do is, is, is security len. So this is a new kind of functions, actually, because um, it doesn't fit into regular function definition, right? Because it accepts a vector, right? It accepts a vector and collapses its um, arguments. That's what it does. It collapses its arguments. So, and interesting enough, it's only supported by, it's like for float, right? Well, I mean, security len probably supported for more, but len is probably supported only for floats. So this one is going to be kind of tricky to implement and kind of tricky to generalize. So, but yeah um okay so uh let me do something like this uh introduce uh lerp uh, let's push that right at the repo okay so i'm almost done with this library and i think you get the gist of uh what i wanted to implement right so maybe at some point i'm gonna even like go through the entire code and compress some of the things refactor some of the things and maybe if the library goes into an interesting place i will do another stream where i'll implement like a configuration file where we could move these kind of things to runtime right because right now these things are compile time but maybe you want to make them configurable uh, via the file so we, we could do that as well that would be actually rather interesting right so some sort of like a configuration uh, for code generation so yeah that was interesting uh you can find the source code for this thing in the chat or in the description if you're watching it on youtube that was rather fun uh, i really enjoyed like i really i really liked as i like wrote wrote more and more code i found like a ways to compress the code so this kind of thing like just 
yeah it produces very compressible code and you can basically develop your own dsl for generating this library so it's actually was super fun uh right so we have enumerations for this kind of functions and then uh they're associated with the types that support and as you can see you can make these sort of connections between the entities uh that generate things but unfortunately boys and girls i already streaming for three hours and it is time for me to go thanks everyone who's watching right now i really appreciate it uh, have a good one and i see you next time on the next stream we're going to be doing a different topic so it's probably going to be a last stream on the topic of code generation of linear algebra library unless i discover something new and interesting about this specific uh library we'll see we'll see uh, and uh, uh, yeah, I gotta go. Thanks everyone for uh, watching, subscriptions, beats, and donations, and stuff like that. Uh, love you. Mwah.